Well, welcome, guys. Thank you guys for waiting. Um, so what I've been working through have been uh, some some issues with uh, technical difficulties, and I'm going to rely on you guys for this. So uh, a couple of things I want to do. Really, this is just a, a stream to see if we can practice using the new phone line. Uh, we do have a new phone line, and I'm hoping to get one brave soul out there to go ahead and call in for me uh, on that new phone line. Uh, and it's the simple, same way. But this time we have a phone instead of a uh, stream yard. So someone out there, one of you two, go ahead and uh, try calling in. Um, again, it is our new phone line. Um, and so what we're doing today actually is just a new idea. I just want to flip out. This is a big uh, weekend for recruiting. Uh, we were supposed to have John Jackson on. Unfortunately, he had a lot of problems with his computer so we will have to get them on at a later time but for today's show what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um just practice just practice using uh the the phone as well as looking at some twitter and the new twitter stuff so uh if you guys come across, across come across any tweets that you'd like to see feel free to send them to me uh send them in but i'm just gonna hit a couple right now uh there's the phone line down there and uh, let's pull up the first one. So there are a lot of tweets came out this week, most of them regarding recruits and a couple of commits that we got earlier in the week. Uh, but I wanted to just go ahead and show you a couple right off the bat. Uh, this is a big weekend. And um, Marshall Levinson, who does a, the on, on three, he's one of the uh, recruiting guys over there. He had the point. He said, in the past seven days, Lincoln Riley and USC have landed commitments from prospects in Florida, Georgia, California, and Connecticut, and have already held commits from Texas and Oregon. USC is finally uh, is finding success nationally, and that's what they need to do. You know, when USC is really rolling, they're getting I mean, the, not just the local recruits, which we do need. We need those guys from the Trinity League, right? We need those guys from modern day. We need those guys from. Uh, St. John Bosco. We did the guys from Southern California, but also if you really think back, even going back to the seventies, you know, we we're talking to um, Munoz on Sunday night. And he talked about the fact you, you had guys on defense named Gary Jeter. If you guys watched uh, football back in the, the early eighties with the Rams, uh, Gary Jeter was a, a, an amazing defensive lineman. These are the kind of things we need to do. We need to go into places like New Jersey and pull in uh, linebackers like Brian Cushing. You know, this is what you need to do if you want to be nationally relevant. You need to dip into Florida and pick up guys like Mike Williams. Uh, and that's what I think USC is going to right now. They are pulling guys from Florida, from Georgia, Connecticut, Texas, and Oregon in order to uh, build the kind of roster we're going to need going into the Big Ten. So that was the first one that caught my eye. Um, comments. Problem is, when I'm flipping back and forth in the comments, it'd be kind of hard. What's up, Jay? Um, Again, sorry, you guys. I did tell you guys that JJ, not 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 USCJ, but JJ was going to be on the show. Unfortunately, his computer was acting up and he wasn't able to get in. So then, uh, let's see. Let's pull another one up. Another one would be right here. So I said this is a USC tweet. And actually, uh, Austin Overn was a walk-on uh, receiver. with. So I technically not cheating. He he still is a, a football player i think at this point i know he's probably going to concentrate on baseball now though uh, and this is a big reason why anyone that watched baseball this year number 10 was he set the record i think with 13 or 14 triples I, someone correct me on that maybe it's too much but i know i know he set the uh usc record for for triples this season it was at least 11 or 12 uh and just hit amazing played just as amazing in center field making plays all over the place out there uh he is a freshman all-american and uh, I think we have another one where he's actually on the uh, collegiate national team. So technically baseball, we were going to talk football, but he is actually on the football team as a walk-on. Uh, another one we have was this one. It came in from Pro Football Focus. USC's offense is stacked, talking about Caleb Williams, quarterback. And then we know we have Austin Jones coming back, the transfer from a couple of years ago, coming in from Stanford. Had a great season last year, breakout season last year. And holy smokes, look who just came, look the cat drug in. John, you there. How you doing? I am, Tim. How's it going, buddy? Good. You made it. I did make it. 
Awesome, man. So everyone, uh, for those of you guys out there, uh, this is John Jackson. John uh, played wide receiver at USC in the late 80s. Uh, at one time, was the uh, all-time career receptions leader. Uh, how many was that, JJ? Let me know. I know you know the number. 156, but who's counting? Right. <laughs> 156 catches. Um, played with a guy you might know, uh, Rodney Pete at quarterback. And uh, guys like uh, Travis. Um, what's, oh, my God. Broke his last phrase, last Travis name. Hanna. Travis Hanna. You had. Uh, Todd Marinovich. Todd Marinovich for 1990, right? Or yeah. in 89, sorry. And um, and I'm trying to think of, a, of the other receiver. Affholter. Right. Eric Appholder, Gary Wellman. So um, those of you guys go, if you have any questions for JJ, go ahead, please go ahead and put them in the comment section. I will pop them up so you can talk to JJ. JJ, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Yeah. I have a, I'm a little behind technology wise, but I'm, I'm trying to get there. Listen, what, what you don't have in technology, you'll make up definitely in football knowledge. <laughs> so I'm so really happy that you could join us. Um, Couple any questions for JJ guys? Go ahead, and drop them in the chat. There's the phone number. I'm not even sure if it's going to work. You guys talk about a night where there's technical issues. Go ahead and, and hit that and see if we can get the uh, for first first phone call in. Or if you want to join the show, I'll drop the Streamyard link here as well. But JJ, I was just catching them up. What we're going to do is we are just going to simply run through some recent tweets that have come across the USC tweet universe uh, and just break down what we're seeing within those tweets. Really, this was just my way of having a show late at night. I didn't think many people would come on because I knew there'd be a lot of errors with this phone line. So um, I'm just trying to see if we can get a brave soul. You guys, so if there's someone out there who's brave enough, please give JJ and me a call at 323-285-1231. And if you're having issues, also drop me a message in the chat letting me know that the phone line is not working. All right, so let me go ahead and pull up another tweet. Uh, we got this one. So this one was from USC that's talking about uh, USC joining the uh, the Big Ten. Oh, we got our first caller. Hold on a second. So let's give this a shot. So this might be bumpy, but you guys hang in. Hang in there for a second. Okay, hold on. So yeah, I knew that would be a mistake there. So I need to set up uh, one thing. Whoever just called in, give me one second to set it up and call back in. I think this might be a bit of a headache. Live, live YouTube. Always, there's never a dull moment. But at least I had a brave person calling in. So, JJ, what do you think about USC joining the Big Ten? Uh, I know that we have home games. These are some really great helmet games. We have USC. Uh, we have Iowa coming in. We have uh, I'm trying to go right. We have Michigan coming in, and I believe you guys correct me in the in the chat. But I think we have Wisconsin coming in as well. Those are the three home games we have coming in from the Big Ten in 2024. Which one of those teams you're most excited to see? Well, well, first of all, don't we have some revenge on Iowa? Did they beat us the last time? Yeah. Sure. Hold on, let's try this. Call from. Slap happy. To accept, press one to send a voicemail. Slap happy. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, Tim. How are you? Amazing. Our phone line works. JJ, are you able to hear slap happy? I can hear slap happy. Awesome. Hey, man, how you doing? Thank you for being our very first tel uh, <laughs> telephone caller. Welcome to the show. Yeah, I figured. Yeah, no, appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I just, I just wanted to ask. Uh, good chatting with you guys, by the way. Just wanted to ask JJ what his, uh, what his best game was personally. Oh, awesome! Great question, JJ. What was your best game? Do you think? I think I well, know. I think it had to do with South Bend. Yeah, well, individual. It was a uh, South Bend uh, in Notre Dame. Um, you had a pretty good day, Tim. What was it? Twenty. I think he had five thousand catches for uh, about a thousand <laughs> yards. No, I didn't. I, I wish we'd still be there. <laughs> it was double digit catches, though, right, JJ? I'm, I'm yeah. certain it was double digit. Yeah, it was. A, it's, I think it's 15 catches, and it was a Notre Dame opponent record. So that's the one I'm really proud of because <clears throat> going into Notre Dame, it's such a historic venue. And <clears throat> I remember after the game, they have a mayor in the locker room. And I just looked into the mayor and said, hey, I just made a part of history. Yeah. The game against Notre Dame. Yeah, that's awesome. And so nice. uh, was that Marinovich or was that uh, Pete? No, it was Todd. Todd Marinovich. Awesome. Yeah, I was going to ask that. Yeah. 
I was going to ask. Yeah, and, and, it, and it also meant a lot. I hate to cut you off, but it, it also meant a lot to me because my dad, of course, coached there. They had some um, games. They had that one game. It was so cold in South Bend. That's why they agreed to move the game up. Um, USC, right. and, USC and Notre Dame agreed to move the game earlier. Now it's like an early October. October, yeah. It As used to be played. To it used to be like at the end. Yeah, they they both they so cold. <laughs> USC said we can't play in these conditions. <laughs> no, I mean I actually think it was unseasonably cold, like ridiculously cold in one year. I do. I heard the story, and they basically said, uh, "Yeah, we're not playing here in November anymore. We're gonna have to move the game up, and it was moved up into October because it used to be both teams, both when they put you here in LA as well as in South Bend, they would play the game like, pretty much the last game of the season, right, or the second to last game of the season. Yeah, it was second and- last or second to last. I mean, it's it's dismal enough. I've been back to South Bend three or four times, and and it, even when it's rainy and cold, and even when it's not even raining, you know, at, at night there. I mean, yeah, it, it's not like freezing or anything, but it's still cold. So you know, I can't imagine going back there. That's one thing about moving to the Big Ten that I'm saying. They keep talking about the players. I'm telling you, I'm not going to Camp Randall in November, JJ. I don't know about you, but I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not going outside. You know, in the hotel, <laughs> right? A slap happy. Any other questions for you? Sorry, I'm doing all the talking. Let's get JJ involved. What, what any more questions? Yeah, no, I was just, I was just gonna, yeah, I was just gonna, two more questions, and, I, and again, I'll, uh, then I'll jump off. But uh, what did you guys finish with uh, that year, as far as uh, wins and losses? And well, that would have been in 1990 or 80, sorry, 89. Yeah, I can't remember the the, re- the exact record. I know we we lost to Notre Dame. We beat Arizona State. That was the Rodney's measles game. <clears throat> and then we went to the Rose Bowl and beat UCLA in the Rose Bowl. And then we went to the – no, I'm – yeah, in the Rose Bowl as a regular season game. And then we played in the Rose Bowl that year against Michigan, which was Bo Schimbecker's last game. And sent him packing as, as a loser. That's right. All right, JJ, one last question, and, and I'll jump off here. And I'll, I'll hang up after, this, after I ask the question. Do you uh, – for the folks you played with those years, um, do you maintain touch with any of those folks or just once you get out of there, it was kind of over as far as the friendship? How'd that work? Um, yeah, I, I stay in touch with him. Chris Hale is one of my best friends, if not my best friend from that team. Um, Marvin Pollard. Right. Um, of course, we lost Junior, which is heartbreaking. Right. Um, he was the most gifted, talented player I ever played with. Um um, let me think who else. Um, the backup quarterback, uh, Shane Foley, you remember him? Um, I remember the name. I'm looking for Gary Wellman. I haven't been able to find him, but um, Gary Wellman would be the one guy that I'm trying to find. <clears throat> okay. Well, I was just curious, but uh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I appreciate you following uh, But I'm I was sorry, Alfred. Go ahead. That- I'll be a different team. Randy Tanner, Randy Tanner, who went to my high school at Bishop Vermont. He was one of my my best friends on the team at that time. Probably my best friend on the team and my mentor. So Randy Tanner, you had to add him to that list of great people too. And I saw Rodney last at the last homecoming, so I'm looking forward to seeing him and his wife. I'm looking forward to seeing his wife more than him, but I'm, <laughs> it, it's great to see both of them always. Well, Slap Happy, thank you so much for being our first telephone caller, but I have a really special guest in the background. I hope you hang around, and uh, and ha- if you have more questions, go ahead and throw them in the chat, okay? Thanks again for calling, though. No, I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Bye. Th- thank you. Okay, so I-, I got a guy right now, JJ, that I've been following for quite some time now. Uh, he is by far my favorite uh, USC personality to watch. Uh, he he shocked me. He came in <laughs> and he's here right now. So uh, everyone, listen, if you guys have not subbed up to USCJ, okay, this guy knows recruiting. He has, he's, he's, he's tapped in with, with the, the, the recruits and families. And he calls things before, you know, you know, he has a video. He, he goes with a video just as soon as it's announced. So, you know, he knew that the, the announcement was coming. So with no further ado, USCJ. <laughs> How you doing, man? Thank you so man, much. I'm, hey, I'm, I'm great, man. I'm, I'm happy to be on with a legend, John Jackson, man. He's an oh, absolute, you, absolute legend, man. I, I really appreciate you uh, inviting me in, man. I just happened to be scrolling, and I seen you. I said, we, me and you have been missing each other. I, I wanted to invite you on my show, in fact, today. And then 
you as well. So I said, let me come on for at least 10 minutes, man. I see John Jackson on here. I said, let me tap in just for a second. Yeah, you see Jay and I, we've been texting back and forth trying to figure out how we I could get on his show or he'd go on my show. And then here you are. I'm really glad you showed up. Yeah, yeah John, man. You, you've, you've talked about USCJ. You know USCJ, right? Yeah. USCJ is a current legend. He's a legend. <laughs> no, 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 no current legend, man. I mean, we're just trying to we trying to keep up the history that you've already, you paved the way, man. So we definitely appreciate you, man. We paid much homage to you, definitely. USCJ, yeah, you- you're trying to take my spot. <laughs> you trying to take my job. I can't do that, man. You you, yeah, you got the history. You got the you got the receipts, John. You got yeah, the receipts. You I got receipts. I got some job, and I, I can see you auditioning for it on every uh, <laughs> one of your uh, podcasts. <laughs> no. I watch all your podcasts. I, I watch them all. Oh, man, I definitely appreciate it. Yeah, you're man, what's your team. thoughts on the Big Ten, though, uh, John? I mean, talking to a legend, I mean, this is uh, – <clears throat> this is a historical moment. I mean, you, usually it'd be just a Rose Bowl. You know, you see these teams, but now, man, this thing is really, you talk talking about year after year, all season long, man. I mean, what's your thoughts on that? I know this is not my show, but I mean, I just want no, to no, ask, hit, hit, no. ask any you question that question. You You're a guest on the show. You could ask any question you want. Yeah, well, USCJ, I'll tell you this. Financially, it's um, a great move for USC. They have to do it. Um, the thing I was most proud of is that we were at the forefront. It wasn't like UCLA, Oregon, and Washington went, and then we just hung on to their coattails. I love the fact that when it when it, it got announced, it was USC and UCLA are going to the Big Ten. Not, right. you know, not USC is going in six weeks later. <laughs> we we were right right at the forefront of making it happen, and financially, it will improve all the sports. And and facilities, even though I think USC's facilities don't need any upgrading, maybe a maybe a, a one or two walls need to be painted. But um, you know the facilities at SD already are awesome, um, so um, it's gonna it, it's gonna be a financial boost to all the other programs. I mean, it's about time we get a soccer stadium. I know I'm biased because my daughter plays soccer, but um, it's about time we get a soccer stadium. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we start getting into some other sports like um, lacrosse and stuff like that. But um, yeah, the, the the television revenue is off the chart. Man, it'll, help us, it'll help us to pay Lincoln um, and also be able to pay other coaches um, to either stay or, you know, go get other coaches in some of the other sports that might not get as much net recognition as football does. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. What about this? So, hey, listen, um, Jay, feel free to stay as long as you want. I got a, a question for both of you guys. Um, I, so, you're, so, JJ, you guys, if you remember a while back, JJ used to do a lot of the uh, shows for Fox uh, right. Sport. He used to do a lot of the, the high school games. Stuff. That'd be, I, just, I remember besides you coming uh, number 80 playing, I remember you for that second career you had uh, after the NFL. But your third career, <laughs> when, you're, when you're there on a sideline reporter for Fox Sports, uh, but someone was saying here about Woodyard. Uh, I know that I know that uh, John Walker today on your show was putting out a plea to to Woodyard to come to uh, to SC. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on Woodyard? Well, I think you know, and I think I, I kind of showed a video today. Uh, well, in the video, uh, the top six corners in the country right now, um, four of them are projected to go to Georgia. Uh, Peyton Woodyard being one of them. And so, you know, my thing is, it's like. If you're going to battle, if you're going to go out and battle, if you're going to fly across country to Georgia, you might as well stay home and battle, man. I mean, because they it's like right now, with you know, the thing that's going on with Georgia is that they're stockpiling talent right now. USC is still trying to build up to that talent. I feel like somebody like Peyton Woodyard could be a part of that building process opposed to going there. You may not play. You're not sure if you're going to play. I mean, they didn't, let's give it to them. They are the national champions. And so you want to, I mean, at least stay home, man. Build, build what we got going on here. And, um, you know, not saying that you don't want to compete, but you can come here and do the same thing. And I think you could be plugged in. So I think it's a 50 50 right now. I don't think he if you committed to Georgia, I don't think he's just just making this trip just to make this trip. Um, I don't think it's a blank trip. I think it's something to this. That's just my personal opinion. Um, you, what, do you, what do you think? Yeah, I just want to get I want to get all those those Bosco defenders, you know, I mean, I, I, I really think it up to, you You know, there were a couple tweets. I wish I could fight it right now, but um. Yeah, I, I I think that we're gonna have a really, really good weekend. 
Now, I don't know if we're getting commits out of here, but I think there's a lot of bonds being made, right? Uh, these, a lot of these guys played together. Um, you know, I think I think John Walker said it. He's like, yeah, come on, you know, you play with all these guys. What, like you said, why are you go fly all the way across the country to play in Georgia when, yeah. when you could play with all your buddies you grew up with in front of your family, go to your games, go go, go home, you know, visit my home, you know, yeah. from, from school. Why why do you need to go across? And what we're showing, I think what they're showing people is, and only in year one, but they are developing players. They are getting better. This defense, man, I can't wait. We catch a lot of crap going across, you know, on these national shows. Of, well, we know Lincoln Riley has a great offense, but what about the defense? Boy, are these people in for a surprise, you guys? I think it starts with Benny Riley, too. Though. I mean, he's really, you know, you see these guys putting on weight, man. I mean, it's just unbelievable. I'm, I'm connected with him on Instagram, and I see these videos that he posts up. These guys are developing, you know, start, development starts as well, you know, in the weight room and the conditioning. And these guys, look, a lot of them are looking way different right now, body-wise. And uh, if you if you remember, you remember when Clay Hill in the springtime, a lot of guys, and then leading up to the fall, a lot of guys, no disrespect to him at all, a lot of guys were getting hurt. Did you, you remember that? Like, it was a lot yeah. of injuries that were taking place. But some of those injuries weren't as, you know, we, we didn't see it as much. Um, this, this time around, you see in the middle of the year, but – it wasn't early on in the beginning of the year. So I think that's, we can kind of give uh, Benny Wiley some of that credit. Yeah. Building up those bodies. I mean, here's one thing, the conditioning is probably there, but I'll tell you what, there's been a lot of transformations on these guys. And there's, there's guys where I'm really looking forward to seeing, you know, how, how much weight, cause we're known for here on the West coast. See, we get guys into the NFL, but we don't get those ready made guys. Right. Like, right. like I had, uh, we, we had um, Michael Munoz, who was Anthony Munoz's son. That dude came ready for football, you know, right out of high school. Those guys in the Southeast, in the Midwest, they tend to be the bigger body guys, and, and they're ready right away um, to, to come out. We have Paige this year. That guy could probably step in and play. But generally here on the West Coast, I don't know if you guys would agree with me, they tend to be – they have the frame, but they got to put that weight on. It takes a year or so in strength and conditioning. It takes some time, nutrition, the training table, to get those guys up to football size. So um, I, I'm excited. I, I do think – on both sides, you can really see though. Do you guys see the effort they're putting in the defense? There's a concentrated effort on defense. I don't know if that's overtly just to say, "Hey, look at what we're getting," or they're just really just filling in exactly the positions that they need. So, yeah, I think I totally that they, agree. I think that they're trying to make a statement, or they obviously want to make a statement from last year. And I said this at the at the at the spring game is that <clears throat> USC was what was it, Tim? They were third to they were they were third to last in missed tackles? Oh, they were, yeah, they were way, way up there in missed tackles. They're also third, uh, I think f they were in a, a hundreds when it came to third down uh, defenses, third down stops. Uh, yeah, and the tackling looked atrocious. We, we don't even need to stat. We just got to watch that Utah game, know how bad they were. But Tim, it was missed tackles that we were recording. They were like a hundred and... Yeah, they're, right. they're, they were like in the bottom five of missed tackles. Yeah. My point was, in order to get in the bottom five of missed tackles, that means your defensive coordinator is putting you in position to make the tackles and you aren't making them. <laughs> right. Hey, John, hey John you know. <laughs> who are we blaming here? And a lot of things. And, Absolutely. And, Jay, you probably know this. These guys, and this is my frustration with, you, this is, I'll, I'll relate it to USC because it's a USC show, but in all college football, these guys get their five stars and then they get to college they, they they start missing tackles like yeah. the USC defense did last year, and then, but they don't want they still want that five star. Right. <laughs> so you obviously are a five star if you're missing all those tackles. Yeah. And that's why um, who was the defensive back Tim that pointed it out that um, that pointed out that that, that that it was on the players, not the not the coach. There that was, was Makai Blackman. Black Blackman was the first one. There were a couple of guys yeah. that came out and said the same thing, right, Jay? Yeah. I mean, there was they and and you could tell it wasn't like a canned line. And Blackman was kind of out, you know, pretty much out the door. It's not like he was yeah. trying to bug up the coaching staff, right? He just said, "Hey, look, it's on us." You know, we, you know, they put us in the position to make the tackle, and, and then at that point, it's man on man. You know, are you going to use proper technique? Are you going to square up, drive through that tackle? You know, what I mean, are you going to break down and not blow the if a guy go right with and go right around you? Are you going to go for the strip and have a guy bounce off you and take it for forty yards? I mean. That's what we were running into. And I, I think they're addressing those issues. Yeah. JJ, here's a couple for you. Um, I saw a question up here. So Eddie Reina is asking you to go within the way back machine. All right. And you got to put your, you got to put your, 
your your memory cap off for this one. So how great was Groot's, right? John Groot, uh, Groot good back at modern day uh, versus Long Beach Poly in the 1998 CF uh, oh, CIF championship game. Now, I know he played both ways. I mean, I think at modern day, he was a running back as well, right? Yes, he was a safety. The safety well, they played him like a... Like uh, like we played Thule last year. They put him at linebacker. He played like a roving linebacker, or, you know, a rover or a strong safety. Um, and yeah, he had an amazing uh, game. A matter of fact, at that poly game they're referring to, um, Gruda Good. You know, how modern day has the three stripes, right? Yeah, Gruda Good stripe for coming off of his helmet at the end of that game. That was, <laughs> that was the, the the best shot of a high school player. Or, and maybe the best individual effort of a high school game I've ever seen. Hey, look, it doesn't get any better than this. All right. So this is, this is, this is a true story. Uh, JJ can back me up. We were just talking, we we're going to watch the, the, the uh, NBA game tonight. That kind of fell through. Um, but then I told him, Hey, look, why don't we go on live? I need to test my phone line out. And now I got John Jackson and USCJ, probably the hottest name in my opinion out right now on YouTube uh, for CJ well, trying to steal my job. Make no, man. I mean, I mean, hey, I'm, man, it take me, it take me years to get the John Jackson status, man. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you guys, I'm not sure if you're okay with this, uh, uh, USCJ, but if you guys want to call in, you got a chance to talk to two, two Trojan legends. One current, <laughs> one current legend <laughs> and one old legend. Oh uh, no, you're, you're JJ. You are a minted all time legend. You're not going anywhere. Uh, so you guys, the phone lines down there. I could drop the the chat as well again if you'd like. Um, how? So let's move forward into into the season, you guys. If I'd ask both of you guys, which unit you think steps up the most this year? Okay, so we're talking about it could be offense, defense, anything. So I, I think there's a lot to be said about our, our running back. I, we had some good running back last year. What unit do you guys think is going to be stepping up this year the most? You want me to go? You want me to go sure, first? Go, go ahead. You go first. That's fine. My opinion, I think the linebacker position. I think when you look at Mason Cobb coming from Oklahoma State, um, you couple that with we still got Shane Lee coming back. Um, you know, he's looking explosive. I've been checking him out, his offseason workouts. We got Tackett Curtis. We got John Davis. All those guys made improvements. And then you got Eric Gentry, you know, coincidentally, who he's just – I mean, he's looking like he's planting off his feet. He looked like he gained in weight. I think he gained – about I think he's about 215 right now. And um and, and he's looking explosive as well. I think our linebacker crew is gonna absolutely they they're gonna be a game changer and um which and, and, and that was when we had issue. We had some issues with you know some some tackling issues with the linebacker crew, but I think we're gonna see a big, big improvement. I think they're gonna place emphasis on the tackles. And uh I think Mason Cobb is gonna lead the way um with that. Yeah, I'm I believe you there. That's that's a great call. Uh, Mason Cobb, I'm a, I am I bought in early on his stock. I know he's going to make a huge difference in the middle there. Um, remember also that we're getting Eric Gentry back, and I think healthy for the first time since before that horrible injury he had in the Utah game. Um, JJ, you have any thoughts on maybe a position you think either A, needs an upgrade, or B, will be upgraded this year? Uh, I'm going to go with the defensive line because I think that – I agree with USCJ, but I think the defensive line is going to help – <clears throat> the linebackers or free up the linebacker to run and make plays. And I also like in particular, my guy is you he helped me with his last name, Sol, Solo. It's Solo. I call uh, him Solo. Yeah, poo poo. Yeah, poo poo. Yeah. So I couldn't say it when we broadcast this game and I can't say it now. <laughs> I don't even want to try it because I'll know it. I'll mess it up. But yeah, Solo's my guy. Remember, he's moving from a middle line, from a linebacker to being down on defensive line. That's going to give us tremendous quickness on the defensive line. And it, it won't take long until teams have to start to try to double team him because I played against him when, when he was a uh, in pop Warner, somehow he made weight to play on Amon Ra's team. John Brown to this day, I swear cheated <laughs> to get him on the field. <laughs> but yeah. Can you imagine solo and Amon Ra on the same team? Oh man. I had to coach against that. Yeah, he had a bulk up. He, so he went from linebacker to Russia until now he's yeah. a defensive end. He's, he's going to have his hand in the dirt. And I mean, talk about a story. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, he, he came out of modern day. He was just the next great um, linebacker. And he had a, a, I believe it was a foot injury, a lingering foot injury that turned into a couple. I think he had a, a knee injury at some point as well. He just had to work himself back and back and back from. And we always wondered if he's ever going to even get on the field. Well, you know, he 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 logged a couple sacks last year. He's showing he's gotten his versatility back. 
Now he has all this size. It's going to be amazing to see what they get. Yeah, there's a lot of guys on that defensive line. Pick it up, Anthony Lucas. Be fun to see what he does. His uh, quickness, though, will be the difference, Tim. Don't try to take my credit. I'm telling you, solo quickness, <laughs> solo quickness will be the difference on the defensive line this year. I, yeah, told, I, I agree with that. I really do. I mean, there's a lot of guys on that. You still got Jamil Muhammad. You got Anthony Lucas. You got Jack yeah. Sullivan from Purdue. I mean, yep. you got some monsters. Barry Alexander, Keon Bars from Arizona. I mean, it's – it's. I mean, I, I, I probably should have went your way. You see, that's why I'm second to you, John. Uh, that you know, oh. that was a great that was a great that was a great call right there. Yeah, yeah but hey, don't trip on Tulane, you guys. I think he's got a big. Is he have a big season as well? Yeah, yeah he's he gonna have that game. quarterback too. But the difference in the quickness will be. Re, re, it'll not. They they won't be as good as Pete Carroll's defenses, but it adds that. Remember, Pete changed the game because he was bringing in guys that were on defense that were so fast. Taylor Mays. You know, Troy Polamalu, all those type of guys, they were so quick that um, you looked at the, 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 the depth chart and you said, oh, they're not going to be strong enough to stack up these teams. But then they go into the Orange Bowl and just destroy um, Oklahoma. <laughs> or who was that game, the bowl game, the, the Orange Bowl we played to win national championship? That was Iowa. We played uh, on national championship. That was Oklahoma. Oklahoma, yeah. And a couple years before that. They, that couldn't, they couldn't handle the quickness back then. No. He, each defense was way too fast for him, remember? And, yeah. of course, Reggie Bush, did, Pete changed the game of how you had to play defense because he had he had basically guys that people were putting strong safety playing linebacker, you know, Bruce being one of them, but Taylor Mays, guys like that, there's no way you could find guys quick enough to block them. And then they added the strength along with it it was just the defense is so talented that you, there's no way to um, to hold him back. Which why Pete that was a that was a key element I think to Pete's all of Pete's success. Um, not all of it. Um, of course, he had other great coaches that were with him and Norm Chow, etc. But that was a key is that he added a speed element, a speed dimension, where linebackers, middle linebackers, are no longer like six feet two fifty. <laughs> they were linebackers that were that could run and. You know they weren't letting running backs get to the sideline and all those type of things. They could they could run and move. It was just the athletic talent was was great with, on those Pete Carroll teams. And the size. I mean, one of the, one of the legendary hits in college football I've ever seen, and definitely the Trojan lore, is that Ray Maluga hit on the uh, on the UCLA quarterback trying to go on the trying to get the edge on him. I mean, you're talking these. The, look at how big those linebackers were. Cushing. Maluga, Mayava, Clay Matthews were more of like a, a rush. But I mean, you know, look how big that's what I'm saying. And this USC defense, Jay, you see the size difference now. You're seeing these guys getting a lot big. Look at the safeties. They're pulling six foot three safeties, you know, 200 pounds. I mean, th there's going to be a huge difference. Th those people over in the in the Big Ten, they're talking smack that we're bringing these California. They're yeah, they're, they're for a big surprise. How about this one, you guys? Hey, uh, uh, Jay Walk said. I think Jay Walk said he's 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 in he's on the on the waiting chat in the chat. He just texted me. I don't know if you can see it or not. No, I let me put the link back in there. Hold on a second. I don't see him backstage yet. No. Okay. He he probably heard that. Yeah. John Walker, it's in there right now. It's on the it's on. I just put the uh, link in there right now. Um, how about this one, you guys? What position will Eric Gentry play this year? I believe he's playing Will. Is that right, USCJ? I believe so. Um, that's the very, I mean, that's kind of interesting how, you know, who, who's going to start. Um, <laughs> John, you might have a preference here, but, but uh, it, it is, uh, you got Eric Gentry, you got Tackett Curtis, I, you know, Shane Lee, Mason Cobb. I mean, who is going to start? One, one of those guys going to be singled out. I don't see personally them bringing Mason Cobb from Oklahoma State and him not starting. That's just Agreed. me personally. And yeah. someone, says here, someone says here, sorry, real quick. Someone made the point also that not just that, but they see him being like the glue, you know, that glue guy on the team, the veteran that's going to play. Um, that's also going to feel like the Travis Dye kind of role on the defense. What, what right. do you think? What do you, how do you think they're going to sort that out? You know, and, and by the way, also, what, what's it like when you have all these guys fighting? I know the competition thing, but when you have all these top players, so you have a top new kid coming in and you got a proven guy with like 100 tackles from the Big 12 last year. What, what kind of dynamic is there in that? JJ. Well, um, unfortunately, 
you know, as a coaching staff and you and, and when you evaluate the depth of the team, you know some guys are going to get hurt. And remember, football players are football players. Either you can play the game or you or you can't. If you can play the game, they will find a place. Just like baseball, if you can hit, they will find a spot in the lineup to hit to, to put you at. It's sort of the same thing in football. And Eric Eric Gentry, I think that he um, you know, he's one of those guys. I think that you have to after the season he had last year, you have to give him a shot that right. you know, be able to play because he was. It, remember, it was the point we said last year. Once he got hurt, oh my God, what's going to happen to the defense? You know, we thought the whole defense was going to go in because. So I think that he's played well enough last year to deserve at least the opportunity to hold and showcase his talent to keep his the spot that he was last year and keep showing the promise that he had last year and hopefully get better as we're hearing the whole entire team is elevating. So I think Eric Gentry, you know, plays another huge role um, in the defense some way, somehow. And, you know, I think that they, you know, it, with the movement of the, the way they move guys at Thule around last year and move guys around, there's going to be a spot for Eric Gentry to play. Right. If you're if you can play football, the game of football, football player to football player, Junior Seau was a football player. He wasn't uh, just a linebacker. He could have played a whole bunch of positions. He could have played tight end. He could have been two way player. He was that talented. You can play if you can play the game. You play the game. It's like Pop Warner. If you can play. They don't pigeonhole you into one spot. And I think Eric Gentry is that type of guy. He can play. He he might even be be a pretty good third down edge rusher. For all we know, with his size, length, and um, you know his his um, you know his arm length and everything, you know you add some strength to his body, and all of a sudden now you can't even get you can't get into his chest to block him, and he becomes even more of a a defensive threat. So I think that he played well enough last year to at least get a shot to show or continue what he started last year, and I'd be. I'd be shocked if he doesn't play a key role with this team. Yeah, I totally Here's my agree. Point. How about this, JJ? JJ, you played my uh, my uh, best player in the world, Ricky Irvins, number 34. I met him in Washington, D.C. when he played for the Redskins. Him and Desmond Howard took me to Hooters when I was 12 years old. It was a blast. Uh, any thoughts, any rem- memories of uh, – I remember the Rose Bowl with Ricky Irvins. Um, any memories from Ricky Irvins that stick out? Well, I mean, Ricky was – he was probably – of all the running backs I blocked for at USC, he probably had the best – he was one of them that had great vision and a great feel. He, although he wasn't that tall, he had a great feel of, you know, of how to set up his blocks, which a lot of people don't realize that's the key to running back. You have to set your blocks up. You know, if the hole is designed to go inside, sometimes you have to give like an outside push before you cut it back. The timing of all that, and Ricky Irvin was low to the ground, as you guys know, and he was extremely quick, which um, made a huge difference. Was part of his running style. He might not have had the the same open field getaway speed that some running backs might have had, but his quickness in the holes, and he used his um, his lower stature as an asset because when you try to tackle him, it was like you know he you couldn't wrap your hands around him. He was just quicker and stronger than most people gave him credit for. Yeah, I, again, I, I was younger, but I remember, I do remember the name Ricky Irvins. I do remember him. Um, I, again, in that, in that, uh, that and I game him in golf. when I was healthy, I killed him in golf. By the way, I had to make sure I played that public. <laughs> he could not hang with me on the on the golf course in uh, Santa Clarita. I can't remember the name. Hey, hey, Larry, I'm gonna give you a break on this one. Uh, cause I know you're a Utah fan. Gentry should only play against speed teams too small. Uh, Gentry should play strong safety. I want to remind you, he was a he was a freshman All American. Uh, he he got hurt, so if he seems slow or whatever, it's because you're right. He's a bit smaller, but remember, he was only a sophomore. That he's now a junior. And what happens is, when you're a freshman to your sophomore to junior year, you start putting on that weight. You start filling in that frame. Uh, I'll bet you he put on some some uh, some weight, some playing weight recently, and I think he's going to be a terror. Remember, the second half of that season, he was injured, and then Eddie Eddie Reina had a question. And then, and Jay, you could go ahead and kind of uh, add to that and also answer this question because you might know him. I don't know him. 
Uh, does Eric like his nickname, the angry giraffe? I don't know if that's tongue in cheek. I know Eddie's been calling him. I think he, it, was that the same Eddie that used to call in during our post game show last year to talk about the angry giraffe. But um, any, any insight on that, Jay, does it, does uh, Eric like the name angry giraffe? I don't know. If, I don't know if he likes, I don't know if he likes the name angry giraffe. I've seen, I've seen quite a few people uh, mention that, but I'm not sure if he likes that, but um, to your point, which you were well, you and John Jackson both were saying that, um, uh, talking about him being on the edge. He actually, as a freshman All American, he actually did play a lot at the edge. They kind of had him yeah. going back and forth, the edge, the middle, the edge, the middle. So, and he had quite a bit of success, even being at that little that two hundred five weight. So, I think, um, you know, they're gonna find a spot for him. He's too athletic and he's too experienced. Not, and then his football IQ is just on absolutely on point. So, uh, they got to utilize him some kind of way. And uh, the question is how, I mean, championship teams have competition like this, man. This, this is this is what it is. And so in order for us to compete and to be successful, everybody's going to have to push each other and drive each other. And that was one of the things that Lincoln said in the spring, talking about the linebacker group. You know, there was no drop-off when the tools came in. Rajon and Tackett yeah. back there. But now you're going to add another equation to it, which is Eric Gentry, man. So this is going to – you know, hey, it's open season, and whoever wins a spot is going to win it. Uh, think, this call coming up, and think about this. Look at think of look at the like um, first world problems we have. So we're we're talking about hey, who's going to play linebacker? So just stop and think. We, you just brought Brajon Davis. You, you have Gentry. You have Mason Cobb, Shane Lee, right? Those are then Tackett Curtis coming up, and a guy, a name that you guys probably don't know is is Garrison Madden. I think I, I don't know if he's George. Oh, I know. Or, hey, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I know. I, mean, I know you know Jay. I'm talking about the 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 uh, the oh, audience. Yeah. You know, this guy has got some speed. Talk about covering. You know, yeah. the, the, you know, his sideline speed, his closing speed. This guy's got speed for days. I think he's from Georgia. It might be Texas, but I'm pretty sure it was Georgia. And I think we're going to see him. I think we're going to see a lot of him this year. Now, the problem is going to be where and when. That's a great problem to have, and I think we all everyone here agrees. So, um, yeah, I can't wait to see his linebacker crew. And then also a good point here, defense started to slip when Gentry was there. There's no doubt about right. that. The intangibles, when the quarterback has to change where he's throwing, the, how he's throwing the ball, where he's throwing the ball to, right, Jay, uh, uh, JJ? So think about this. You have him in the middle, 6'6", six, six in the middle, just his arms up blocking those passing lanes that traditionally would be there for him, right? I mean, how much does that really change the way the quarterback can play? Well, that's true. But remember, Eric Gentry, when he provides – Defense is the overall team speed, and because of that, he has that team speed. You, who now you ask who's going to block him? It becomes a mismatch when you set up your defensive. Most defensive coaches, they can't get enough defensive team speed. Um, you can get guys with size, but it's just hard to get enough guys with the, that that combination. So remember, and that, that's the one thing I'd sort of you know caution everybody. It's to move from linebacker to safety, now you're moving from a position where a linebacker, you know, you're close to the line. When you move to safety, although if you know, it's a similar position in some some cases, the at the safety, you now you're getting into where you have coverage responsibilities, and yeah. linebackers don't work on man-to-man coverage responsibilities no. in practice. Now he, he's he's not going. He, he right. okay, I don't know a lot, but I'll tell you this. Eric Gentry is not playing safety. So we can stop that conversation just right now. That's a whole, like you said, you know, you, there's a different whole skill set to that to be able to play in the secondary. But speaking of which, though, we just talked about the defensive line. We talked about the linebackers, right? You know, how much, you guys, is this new defensive line causing havoc in the backfield? Linebackers like Gentry coming at you, making you change your, your, your passing lane. Um, how much does that help the secondary? Because we had a, we had a, boatload of interceptions last year i mean and people said oh you know that's just a fluke the ball bounced a certain way and yes there were a couple but you know each time there was a tip it seemed like it was eric gentry tipping that ball and then it was just that you had a safety right. or a corner or a nickel just going oh thank you god and grabbing it and going the other way so um how much do you guys think that our secondary is going to feed off this brand new front seven i think i think it's going i think they're going to feast on this i mean and then you look at you couple that with the guys that we had come in um you, you know Kalen, of course Kalen bullock I'm um, not sure if Christian Pierce. I, 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 I absolutely, Christian oh, Pierce, yeah. that freshman. I absolutely love that kid. Um, you look at guys like him. Of course, you got Bryce Shaw and um, 
Christian Roland Wallace, our secondary, whether uh, people realize it or not, has been upgraded to another level. And you got guys that can come in and Damani on the other side over there. You still got Sierra Wright. So, I mean, <laughs> I think it's going to be, you know, very, they're very athletic right now. You still got the new guy that came in from Alabama. Um, he's going to be tremendous. His film looks incredible. And that was just practice film. Um, I actually showed it doing a doing a video um, on him, but he looks incredible as well. His name, I got a brain freeze, but he's from Alabama. Him Figures. and his brother. Figures. Anquan Figures, I believe. Figures, yeah, Figures. And so I think those guys right there, if the upfront guys do their job, I think they're going to feast on this. In fact, one name you didn't say as well. So all those new guys and be- the wonderful faces were coming in. These are all, guys, these are all four and five-star guys that Jay just talked about. Uh, you also have Kalen Bullock back there for his junior year, who's been back there as a ball hawk for right. you know, his, whole, his whole career. Uh, I, I just, I, again, you guys, whatever someone says to you, yeah, but what about that defense? You know what? I'm going to go to a new policy. I'm just going to sit there and smile. <laughs> I'm just going to sit and smile, Jay, right? And, and, and it, makes Jay, you frustrated when, it makes you frustrated when they say that, right? right? <laughs> it's like, clearly you've been watching ESPN and you've not been watching uh, uh, USC Jay, who's been filling you on the fact that this is a brand new defense we have back there. So, yeah. So, so I'm just sit there smile and say, talk to me in November. That's all I'm going to say when they start talking smack about our defense from now on. Um, okay. So then uh, really quickly, because I don't know how long either of you guys can stay on for, but um, you guys, if you, you guys have over there, you have JJ. And then on the other side, you've got, oh, let me close this up. You've got USCJ. You guys could call in. There's a phone number down here. I'm going to drop the link. I don't know if John Walker was having trouble with the, the link or not. I haven't seen him pop in yet. Well, he just texted me. He just texted me. He said, call, you can call in too of that number. Yeah, that he just texted me. He said he just, he's, he'll, he'll listen. He was in position, but he, I think he's out of position right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, where was it? Okay. So, you guys, you have the opportunity to call in. Don't be shy. Oh, we got another call. Here we go. Oh, no. Sorry. It's my kid. I can't take that call. Um, Going into the season, we are, I believe, going to be the odds on favorite to win the Pac 12. Now, I know a lot of people are talking about Washington or Oregon. If not Washington, Oregon, or Utah, do you guys see anybody else in the Pac 12 that might give USC a run for the for the championship, the Pac 12 championship? Well, I mean, Oregon State, I don't think we can sleep on Oregon State with, with, with DJ. With DJ there, I mean, Oregon State always, for whatever reason, gives USC some some problems. Now, I know they lost two incredible defensive backs. What's the guy's name? Ray John Wright. I think I think they both got drafted, but uh, cornerbacks. But they always, man, that coach, Jonathan Smith, man, he is a, a phenomenal coach, a phenomenal exactly. mind. I give him if all respect. You know, I mean, he just – his play calling, his, his game planning is just like second to none. And so I think if if it's one team that's just kind of a team that we're just thinking about other than the, the usual, you know, the usual suspects like Oregon or Washington or um, I think it would be Oregon State that just could come out of nowhere. Yeah. And you know what? If anybody's going to get um, DJ to get rid of those gyps, um, Matt Zemick's been talking about, Trojan's Wire, it, it's going to be a quarterback guy like Jason Smith, um, Jonathan Smith, who who is, again, if you guys don't know him, he's he was a long time – he was a quarterback – at uh, Oregon State, Oregon State yeah. for the Beavers, and that's why he's not moving on. I guarantee you, he would have got a lot of phone. He probably has got a lot of phone calls, but yeah. since it, you know he's an alum, he's he's staying there. And he's trying to build this thing up, and where their strength is going to be is on that offensive line. And in Clemson, that offensive line wasn't like some of the uh, offensive lines they had in the past. He didn't have those you know those pass receivers, especially that slot receiver that they're used to having there in, in Clemson. So that put a lot of pressure on DJ to be the man. Well, with this offensive line, I do think that they could have a steady run game, kind of get him comfortable and let him show off that. Because, I mean, I'll tell you, he has one of the strongest arms I've ever seen in high school. That guy just has a cannon of an arm. So if he feels comfortable back there, I think he could pick apart a lot of defenses. John, John, do you have any questions or any ideas about the uh, who might challenge USC for the uh, the championship? Well, I got to piggyback on what you guys are talking about. Jonathan Smith... I covered him when he was uh, playing at Oregon State, uh, and he was, at the time, I think, uh, who was the coach? Um, Riley? Was Joe Pettibon. Was it Joe Pettibon? I, I was the head coach, or was it? Um, 
it was the coach that went to the San Diego Chargers, right? Oh, Dennis Erickson. Dennis Erickson. Dennis Erickson. Oh, Erickson. Yeah, yeah, and he was so sharp. That's they couldn't. Our 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 television meeting before the game, they couldn't start talking about how smart and cerebral Jonathan Smith was. He's going to be the next, what I would call the next Lincoln Riley, the next coach that gets plugged by a team like a Texas or, and be careful, it might even be a Big Ten team that gets taken and paid a huge amount of money to come Mm -hmm. leave Oregon State to go to their program. That's going to be the next great hire that will make some athletic director a genius. Yeah. I mean, I I, I think that. I think that they're going to give a lot. You know, I, I, people are talking about the Ducks. I, I think that the Ducks are going to have a hands full uh, with a couple teams up in the north. You know, Washington, Oregon State. That's it's, it's tough teams up there in the north this year. So, um, all right. So nobody's – I can't believe it. everyone's afraid to call in. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and get them in right now. Otherwise, these guys got things to do. It's a Friday night. It's getting a little bit late. Uh, we just came in to check out the phone line, uh, number 323-285-1231. Or one more time, I'll drop the stream yard in here, but this is your last call to get in and talk to USCJ or Trojan great receiver, John Jackson. Um, well, guys, I think we're probably going to close it up because we <laughs> All right. Hey, you know, it's crazy, Tim. I, I was just sitting here. I was getting some stuff together for, you know, for, for this weekend, man, just dealing with these recruits. And I'm just scrolling down my phone. I said, man, there he is right there. We've been talking back and forth. I told you I wanted to bring you on today with us. And then, uh, of course, we went – back and forth so it was a pleasure man especially with the legend hey john i gotta get you on man <laughs> i gotta get you on only if we get it in writing that you're not going to take my job <laughs> <laughs> take i need it. it in writing that you're not going to take my job i'm not qualified man <laughs> no, i'll be i'll be i'll be happy to come on your show you right. no problem you got it okay oh, so uh, tim yeah. I, me and tim have each other numbers so here we'll we'll uh can get we can get it that way yeah, I was at my day job, bro. I definitely would have been on today. Listen, I, I'd love the opportunity to come on there at your show. I, I Again, I'm a big fan. I, I, I watch all of your stuff when I can, when I'm not at work. Um, and and I, I would love to uh, come on your show anytime you want. Uh, all right. JJ, all right, so you, you're getting out of here? I'm out of here. Hey, Jay, hey, take care, JJ. And uh, hey, Tim, I'll see you later. Oh, God bless, man. USC, Jay, it might be a call for you. Hold on a second. Okay. Let's see if someone wants um, to join. Hey, you, you yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, Hi, um, you're, you're on the you're on the air with John Jackson and USCJ. How are you doing? Yeah, get get my Tim. Tim, you hey, how me. you doing, boss? My name is D. Man, I was just calling in. Um, man, excited about the new recruiting class. Man, I just want to you know what was y'all thoughts? Uh, what some of the players y'all like that have this so far? What y'all think about them? Um, and, and how y'all see this affecting the the upcoming um, the upcoming years for USC? All right. Okay. Great question. Um, hang on a second. So, uh, USCJ, what do you think? What play, what players stick out to you the most? Man, um, Cam, Cameron Found Cameron Fountain and the, well, the, all of them really, but Cameron Fountain, um, Dakota Fields, and uh, young man, I did a video about today, Elijah Newbe, uh, Newbay. Uh, new by new B. My wife was getting on me about saying his name, but if you've seen that guy fly around, he is uh just incredible. I mean, I don't know if they're gonna put him at the edge or if they're gonna put him at middle linebacker, but that guy, after looking at his film and, and really looking at it these past few days, I really think he's 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 kind of my favorite right now. Him and him and Dakota Fields. Um, but I think as we go into the Big Ten, you see how they, they're recruiting right now. You got guys like Brian Jackson, who's 240 pounds. We need a big Lindell White type of back going into the Big Ten. So I think right now this class is looking incredible right now. You got uh, the safety, Boatwright Wright, um, coming in from Clearwater, Florida. I mean, this class is stacked. I think we're going to finish off in the top three this year. Yeah, yeah Jackson's going to bring that thunder, isn't he? I, I can't wait Absolutely. to see Jackson run and just run. That will be your Big Ten back. John, are you, are you on the line, John? Hey, hey, what's up, gentlemen? We got you. So, you guys, we have a, th- a third great coming on. We got John Walker, cornerback slash for a little while wide receiver, uh, but played on those Trojan teams that absolutely dominated, well, let's just say dominated everybody. Huge pleasure. Thank you for being on the show. How you doing? I am excellent. Just, 
I was, you know what, guys, I was hanging out in the hot tub, getting some recovery, <laughs> listening to the show, the vibe. I was praising and rejoicing because I see my big brother, John Jack, looking stronger than ever. Fighting <laughs> on what he's supposed to do. Yes, sir. The last time I saw him, man, we just had a pretty big hug at a local mixed martial arts event. And uh, it was just so great to see him. That was about two, three November ago, close to. And I'm just so blessed to see you and hear your love speak, my man. And that's that's from the bottom of my heart how much I love you. Good job. Oh, man, I love you too, man. Yeah, man. We got to get together, John. We do. Yes, sir. I what what, what part of town are you? I'm, uh, I'm in Orange County. Okay, that's close enough. So we got. So I'm in Long Beach. So we got to find a way to get together, though. Um, it's it's done. it's it's as good as done. Yeah. I, once once we get off, I I'll text you. I'll text you. I'll have your number, and I'll text you, and we'll fellowship. Well, I I can't believe you guys have a chance here. Now you got now you got three big Trojan dudes. You got again my my favorite uh, YouTube celebrity and and. In USCJ, you got John Walker uh, played in well championship. You name it. They're, they're the high of the Pete Carroll years. You've got, and then you also have the the Trojan legend John Jackson, who's just a, a receiver played in those late Larry Smith teams. Um, get those questions in quick, because again, I can't keep celebrities like this on very long. So if you guys got a question, you better bring them in quick. Uh, and J- J- JJ, really quick, could you give us an update on uh, on John? How he's doing over in Nevada? Is he checked in? How's he doing in his place? Yeah, well, he's moved into his place. Um, um, now I'd be lying to you if I told you he was a little bit homesick. He still wish he would have be, you know, still be back here with his brothers. But um, yeah, he's moved in. He's made the transition nicely. He's happy, and um, and they're treating him great so far. So he's in he's in a good spot. And then Eddie Rain has a question. I'm gonna open up to all you guys. He said, "Ask JJ who's the better program, Bosco, Modern Day, or Sarah." I think we might get oh. a couple. Which decade? <laughs> it depends on, you know, modern day was, uh, you know, this is going back to the beginning of our high school football package. But modern day was, uh, you know, the people that are, they, they're in the Notre Dame, right? Everybody hates them. Everybody wants to beat them. Yeah, they can't. Um, Sarah has probably the most, of all of, of those schools there has had the most talented players at that school in terms of you know college prepared talented players players that play in the spread offense whether it be quarterback or especially receiver a lot of receivers uh yeah a lot of robert woods etc that i guess it starts stopped right there george farmer robert woods i mean what else do you what else do i need to say so um, yeah, that you know, as far as the, the you know, just overall raw talent, it would be Sarah. Um, they've also had they've also produced some linebackers that have been excellent as well. So yeah, it, it, that's a tough that's a tough call. Um, so I don't get myself in trouble because my youngest kid goes to St. John Bosco, so I got to be careful. <laughs> Coach Negro might try to kill him. <laughs> and then John Walker, what do you think? Who 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 do you have, or do you want to add a different name to that list? Gosh, man. So hard, isn't it? This is. It's, it's, you can't do what modern day does year after year after year for the last days. You just it's undeniable. Uh, so I would I would probably say the program to me that most that most like an NCAA caliber program would be modern day. The best athletes are definitely uh, consistently coming out of that that bell like that bellflower area where Bosco is. Uh, and you can't you can't forget about the great athletes that come out of one of these top twelve. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially. And then uh, what about you, Jay? What do you think? I kind of feel the same way. I mean. Sarah used to have quite a few. I mean, they used to. Uh, Dory Jackson was there too, man. You know, I mean, you had, you, I mean, you had so many guys there. Um, I'm gonna say the same thing. Modern day just kind of, you know, they they kind of set the standard, and it seems like everybody else has kind of followed suit. 
Um, as to but Bosco's looking real strong lately, though. I mean, you look look at the players they got this year, though. I mean, look at the look at the defensive players that they got this year. Um, opposed to now, I like Aylen Breeland, but you look at the look at the linebackers they got. You got Lockett. You yeah. got, I mean, you got some guys, man. And then they got the cornerbacks. <laughs> yeah, it's it's gonna be it's it's gonna be um, and that's what we're talking about. We see a lot of skill positions, guys, but we're also you said Breland, so that's the defensive you know lineman, and then all those offensive linemen they be, they have over those huge guys they have over at Modern Day. I mean, I, Baker's pretty much gone, but Carter. I mean, I, I think we're gonna. I just I just feel I think we're gonna get Carter. Um, and and the way it's it's lovely to have these problems. Like we're talking about how much depth we have at linebacker. It's great to hear all this recruiting you have here in Southern California, and we're going to take the Big Ten by storm. You know, they're going out nationally to grab all these guys. They just got a guy from Connecticut, six foot three, right? Safety from Connecticut. This is who the pieces we're adding. So that's just how special. John Walker can tell us all about this. We were talking about earlier how when USC is USC, whether it's the 70s under McKay or or Robinson, or if it's the 2000s under Pete Carroll – Mm. These they, they go out and they get the best. They get NFL players from all around the country, and then they bring in all of our, our amazing Southland talent. So I, I mean, I'm I am more than excited. You guys, we have one caller on here really quick. I don't want to keep you guys. This is amazing. Oh, for I got a question. Yeah, Alfonso, go ahead and ask your question. Tim. Yeah, oh wait, oh, sorry, Alfonso, hold on one second. Sorry, Alfonso, hold on one second. Sorry, John, what'd you say? Hey, I, I got a question for John. Is John Walker still on? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. John, I got a trivia question for you. Which USC receiver did Todd Marinovich complete his first? Which USC receiver did Todd Marinovich throw his first, complete his first completion to? Which USC receiver? Which USC receiver? Let me just think about that a little quick. Let, let I got the I got the answer for that. One moment of the year. Hmm. I think it's a trick question. <laughs> first, first, first touchdown pass. Let me think. No, just reception, period. Hmm. Oh, reception. Yeah, which USC receiver? Is he? Who? Hey, hey, hey. All right. Is it you? <laughs> me. That's right. I was playing. I was playing safety for Bishop Amon, <laughs> and talked to me interception. That was his first reception to a USC receiver. <laughs> uh, <that's laughs> I knew. I knew that was. <laughs> and hey, there's a BH te- a BHS tape floating around here somewhere that could prove it. <laughs> <laughs> He hit me right between the numbers. He hit me right between the numbers. Hey, Alfonso, this is your shot. Were you wearing, were you wearing jersey number 80 then, too? Oh, that ugly number. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe the coach made me wear 86. I hated that number. I was mad at our coach for the, my whole high school career because he made me wear that number. All right, Alfonso, you, here's your here's your shot. You got you got John Walker on here. You have got John Jackson. You got USCJ. What's your question? Okay, this is Alfonso from our San Pedro. I'm 87 years old. I've been following Trojan football and then all sports, really. At SC, seen them live, seen them on TV, whatever. My main question, I don't know if it's been asked to all this your great panel there. What's going on with Corey Foreman? Ooh. All right, guys, who wants to go first? USCJ. Wow. Um, you know, I, I think he's I think he's still battling. He's still he's still making his way back. Um, you know, they switched him. I think his natural position um is it, not going to be the standing up position, which is where Jamil Muhammad or Sam Green will be playing. I think is you know, you putting you putting your hand in the dirt. I think that's you know, coming from the defensive end spot. He's that that's his natural position. However, he lost some weight and I think he's like at 235 right now. So, you know, I, I think he's gonna be battling. I think he's gonna be competing. Um, we know the talent is there, we know the five star talent is there. Um, but are you gonna activate it? That's the question. And so uh, but I think sky's the limit for him if if he just taps into it. Um, as to what exactly is going on, I can't speak to that at, because I'm not I'm not I'm not in his head, but 
I know he's still around, and I, you know, I've seen guys making videos that Corey Foreman is going to transfer, but the fact that he's still there lets me lets me know that he still wants to compete. So I think that, with that being said, I think there's hope that Corey is going to come out and uh, try to make some things happen. Yeah. Okay, John or John, <laughs> what are I, you guys' thoughts? Yeah, I think I think that the, uh, Corey Foreman losing that weight is another sign of adapting to the 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 new defense that USC is going to put on the field this year with greater team speed. The fact that he's losing weight will, of course, add to his team speed and will add team overall team speed to the entire defense. I think Corey Foreman is a key player in this defense. The question is, just like you said, USCJ, can he put his hand down or can he play in a stand-up position or does he have to go back down? He's more natural with his hand on the ground. But, um, you know, are they going to try to stand him up? That'll be the interesting thing to keep an eye on. And Mr. Walker, you got a, got anything to add? You, def, you know, you definitely kind of took the words out of my mouth. I, I echo that sentiment. But mostly what I feel like with Corey is he's just proving that he's, he's such a team player. And that's really, that's really what I'm most proud about is if you work your whole life to gain that level of muscle mass, to gain all that weight, to work hard, to become as competitive as you can be and develop these prototypical attributes within your body and your, your power, your, your technique, all of it. And then your coaches come to you and say, hey, buddy, we, we might need you to do something a little different and that's going to require you to lose some weight and play a different role. That selfless Trojan-style football where you're putting the team dudes first Hopefully and prayerfully, uh, you know, God honors that by giving him some success this season when he does get his opportunity. But at the end of the day, you know, he's just going to have to work at a breakneck speed. You know, he's got to he's got to operate at a suicide pace to be as competitive as he needs to be. And each and every day, he puts his hand in that dirt, or he stands up outside the edge, or whatever it is the coaches are asking for him. He has to say to himself, you know what? I gotta work at a suicide pace, and today is a good day to die. Let's just go. Let's just go and show these guys why I am who I am. So I do believe we'll see a little bit of a breakout season from him. He's actually, and I haven't said this out loud yet, but he is one of my sleepers for this upcoming season. Yeah, I, I'm really pulling for him because there's a couple things that as fans, you guys can see a lot of players up here. Us as fans, we got to remember one thing. You know, Corey Foreman didn't ask to be a five star. Right. Corey Foreman didn't say come in and say, "Hey, look how hyped I am." Like, we did that. He he that young man didn't do anything except show up, become a Trojan, bust his rear end uh, on Howard Jones every day, working, saving our butts in the UCLA game. You know he wrapped that game up. But that, the way our defense was playing, you know we were getting ready from the march right down the field with DTR, saved our butts there. I think I, mean, I agree with John Walker. I think he's going to break out. This is big. Also, let's look at for the other side. And this will be selfish as as a team. You know, Sean Nua is going to be coaching him up. And I mean, if everyone's going to coach him up, it's going to be Sean Nua. And what a feather in his cap it would be. Let's flip the other side. We want this young man to be successful. But imagine if he turns him into an All Pac-12, an All American, an NFL draft pick. After he struggled so long trying to find his way, if somehow the magician Sean Nua can get this kid moving and, and make it a big difference imagine the feather in his cap that's going to be and we're just going to start pushing kids away because they're going to be coming they're going to be coming and so if, um if i had two guys that i that i say i would be pulling for on this defense it would be ray john davis and Corey foreman those two are like my number my one and two guys that i just i really with all my heart i just want to see them because i know i know the potential ray john had the opportunity to go to lsu decided to come to usc yeah. i know that that potential was there um, so I want to see those two guys break out. That's a great ad and, and, and good attitudes, right? Jay. I mean, you know, here's two guys, kids who just keep their heads down. They keep working and anybody's not pulling for them. Man, I, I don't know. I'm, you must have your Trojan hat on too tight because you got to pull for these kids. They're working harder than a lot of us. I, it's embarrassing. Sometimes I hear some of the comments and like, it's crazy. Oh, and you, what, know? you know, and the thing is people got to realize these are somebody's kids, you know, right. you know, whenever I hear somebody say, you know, they, they garbage, they're trash. I mean, that's something me and Jay walk. We never, when, when we, we're on the show, we never, um, no matter how bad a kid's playing, we don't put that negative energy out because at the end of the day, these are somebody's kids, man. You got to think about that. And uh, that's, we try to reiterate that. 
Yeah. Great point. You guys, Trojans, if you're a Trojan. Most, Sorry, John. Most humans, would buckle under the most humans would buckle under the pressure that these athletes, these student athletes, have to endure at the University of Southern California. Not only is it a hefty athletic workload to be planned for arguably the most competitive school in the country, but academically, it also has the equal standard. You have to be competitive in the academics as well. And so there's just so much to balance. And for people to broadcast their negative commentary or their, uh, in my opinion, their insecurities and project them onto the young athletes who are just trying to figure it out, they would not be able to walk one mile in those shoes. They wouldn't be able to walk one snap in those shoes and those shoulder pads. And so you guys, as supporters, you have to recognize that the power of life and death does live in the tongue. You can speak wonderful things into existence or you can speak destruction into existence. And it all comes from your, your words. And there's a, there's a saying that I believe in that I always tell myself is I will never say something about myself or someone that I care about that I do not want to be true. So if I, that means like I will never say, man, like if I shoot a jumper and I miss, and I will never say, man, I suck. If I don't want that to be true, then I will never say that about myself, nor will I say it about someone that I want to see do well. So I will never say, gosh, man, that athlete sucks if they miss the tackle. What I'll say is, gosh, I hope that they get that figured out and improve. And that's, that's just a different mindset that leads to positive energy going into the world versus the, the uh, counterpart. And that's a, a rant, but it's just something that I really believe. Yeah, and that said like a true Trojan. You know, we're Trojans, you guys, you're out there. That, that That's the real attitude you have for a Trojan. Those guys on Howard Jones are spilling blood, sweat, and tears for you so you can be happy and brag about them on Saturday or on Monday at the water cooler. Those kids work their butts off in the classroom and on the field. Really well said. And let's be real about this. Uh, talk about what percent of you out there could actually even make the USC football team. So let's just, <laughs> talk, you know, this is, uh, I would love to see any of these coaches face if I came out there for a, for a tryout. They would just go, uh, you know, so you guys out there talking, you, you couldn't even make the squad. So stop, stop your yapping. All right, I listen, I, you guys are all way too generous. I don't want to keep any more time. Uh, you guys been on late. John, love hanging out with you all the time, man. You know, we're, we're going to get to that Dodger game. Uh, Jay, again, big fan. Love you guys. If you guys are not watching USCJ and John Walker, they had a great show today. Uh, Jay is before anybody. I don't care who, the, how many, how big their website is or whatever. This guy right here is the guy you should be going to. He will let you know who's coming. He will let you know all about the guys that are coming. And if you're not subscribed to him yet, um, please, I'll go ahead. I'm going to drop, I'm gonna drop the, uh, the, uh, the link in, in the chat in a moment. Uh, you guys want to say anything before we go here? We'll start with yeah. you, John. Sorry, which John? John Walker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, Guys, I'm, I'm just so, I'm, I feel so blessed with this standing in the fellowship of strong brothers. And, and ultimately, that's what this is. I mean, we're, we're all brothers. We're, we're soldiers of the same effort. Uh, we're, we're all praying for good things to happen within the body of the USC fraternity. And um, I'm just so blessed and fortunate to, to be a part of something that's a lot bigger than all of us. And carefully, these conversations and this dialogue and these moments can transcend us and they can live on forever. I mean, I'm hoping that we're creating a legacy that, you know, our ancestors beyond us can look back and just look at us as disgusting and, and try to promote healthy and positive things into this world. Um, I pray that we leave behind a thumbprint and footprint that make people just say, wow, man, those are just some remarkable gods. And I'm so so, I feel so awesome to be able to share with you all. And I, I mean, it sincerely, thank you so much for taking time out of your Saturday night to come join our show, Trojans, the great John Walker. Thank you. And believe me, you and Jay are welcome anytime. I will, I will, I will, Likewise, you know, likewise. You right. whatever you want. So awesome. Uh, USC Jay, any words? So, Man, this is guy, you guys got a sub that I'm sure all of you, by the way, are because I, I look at my analytics and everyone says they come to my show from your show. So, most of you guys are, but if you aren't yet, you definitely need to go check them out. 
Hey, I, I just want to say thank you, Tim. Um, you reached out to me. I think you reached out to me first, but but I, I, I admire you from a distance anyway, um, even before you reached out. So I want to say thank you for the opportunity um, for just even coming on. It looked like you stepped your game up, man. You and LBC got it going on on Sunday, man. So I'm really <laughs> enjoying that show. And to the legend, uh, John Jackson, I mean, man, I mean, what can I say? I could The TV could be on in the den, you know, I'm in there talking to grandma and I hear that voice, Fox Sports. I said, man, that's John Jackson. Let me run in there and go check him out, man, because your voice is like a familiar voice to me growing up. So I appreciate you, man. You're a legend. Um, much love to you, man. And, and, and then my man, Jay Walk, he already know. He's family. So, you know, I appreciate it. And uh, look, it's vice versa. You guys come on too, man. It, I, I say one of the things I say in my introduction um, to my show is Trojan Family, Trojan Family, because it is an absolute family, man, and everybody's connected. I learn from you. We learn from each other. So um, I appreciate all you guys. And listen, you guys, if you go on and watch John Walker and Jay, you're going to see authentic love for the Trojans, authentic love for life. And one of the biggest reasons why I love watching their show is I you just feel better after watching this. I mean, just something inside, you just feel better. So you guys do yourself a favor and go check it out. And again, thank you so much, both of you guys, for being on the show. And Absolutely. then. My buddy, JJ. Yeah, Tim. Thanks for having me, Tim. It's, it's been great. USC, J. I'm going to go to USC tomorrow and tell them not to hire you. So, <laughs> so now I'm going to throw salt in your game before you can ap apply for the job. So, All right. <laughs> All right, guys. So listen, we're going to get out of here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you liked anything, please hit that like button, subscribe, grow this channel. Uh, I've, I've got now I have three ex Trojans. Well, there's no such thing as ex Trojan, three former USC Trojans that have been on our show. We had Anthony Munoz. Now we've had John Walker and JJ making a second appearance. If you guys sub up, give me a couple more subs. I might be able to get some more of these guys in here. So um, please help with that the show. We appreciate it. If you enjoyed anything here, you know, the best thing you can give me is it's a is a subscribe. So for that, John Walker, USCJ, and John Jackson, uh, we're all appreciate you all being here and everyone fight on. Fight on, fight on. Fight on, fight on. Fight on.